What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Jahan and we have a lot to catch up on. But first off, I moved. Apartments. My stuff at the apartments, but I'm still at my parents' house. I don't even understand it. It'll all make sense in a few weeks, but for the time being, I'm here. I dyed my hair a bit, so it's kind of like supposed to be like rose gold highlights. I'm going for that Michael Kors watch realness. Hopefully you guys like it as much as I do. I'm kind of vibing with it. And then finally, there are a lot of you now. A lot more than there used to be. So I wanted to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to you guys. So in this video, I wanted to take you guys down the rabbit hole of how I make my portraits look a little bit more realistic and a little bit less like the famous art restoration of Jesus where he looked like a sock monkey. But hey, we've all painted a few sock monkeys, nobody's perfect, and along those lines, just a quick reminder, I am not an art teacher, I'm not even an art major, I'm just a person who likes to paint. Take my advice with all of that in mind, and if you guys have conflicting opinions or anything that you think will help people, please leave it down in the comments because I'm also learning, but also so is everyone else, so we can just make kind of a learning community. For this painting, I wanted to paint someone who is my everything, and frankly, she makes me focus on her. Do we have any guesses yet? Let me give you one more hint. Yes, okay, so we're gonna be painting the lovely Ariana Grande, the dangerous woman. Definitely do not pull off a high pony as much as she does, but with all that being said, Let's just get into it. So in all of my other videos on this YouTube channel, I freehand directly onto the canvas, just kind of from my brain, and it works out okay. But I tried that this time, and yeah, ew, no ma'am. So we're gonna be trying this instead. The charcoal method, which I learned through Super Ray Dizzle. She's great. I'm sure you follow her. We're gonna use this charcoal. I, You can use any brand of charcoal, it doesn't really matter. Find the back of your picture and then cover the whole thing in charcoal. Then take your canvas, have some aesthetic shots, and then put your picture directly onto the canvas. You know, the charcoal is still in the back. Tape it on with masking tape so you don't mess up anything. And then take a pencil and you're gonna draw on top of it, essentially trying to draw every single detail. So if you see the glint of the eye, do that. If you're gonna see the top of the nose, do that. And just like that, voila, we have an absolutely perfect to begin a super realistic painting. So we're gonna start by putting the basic face down onto the canvas. And this is always a part that's a little bit hard for me to describe what I'm doing. You can watch my blending video if you want a little bit extra details on my tips and tricks on how to blend acrylic paint. Basically, I just kind of spend a million years on it. That's the short of it. I don't really tend to use any additives or mediums. I certainly didn't with this painting. I just kind of am used to acrylic at this point, so I know how it behaves and it dries and stuff. These clips were put together over the span of about two days of work, so definitely just trust the process. So some tips for eyes. I think the best way I can do this is tell you guys what I focus on when I'm painting. So first things first, irises are not one flat color. They tend to have gentle lines in them and differentiations in the shades, even if you're painting in black and white like me. So I pay particular attention to that and any kind of discernible shapes within them. So I think a really good way for almost anyone to immediately up their portrait abilities is just to recognize that eye whites are not white. They're usually like gray and maybe sometimes even bluish. So you can use my Facetune tones tool trick if you need to like figure out what the exact color is. As soon as you match that, it will immediately look more lifelike. The next thing is kind of a smaller detail, but hey, that's what this whole video is about after all. Eyelids always cast a very, very small shadow on the really upper part of an eye white, so definitely make sure to include that. Next, pay attention to the eye veins. This is a little bit tricky because you can really easily make someone look like they are baked out of their mind if you're not careful, but I like to use a thin brush with watered down paint, and then after it dries for like 30 seconds or so, lightly blend it out with a fluffy brush. That way it leaves a bit of a hint of a line and it's not so intense. After a lot of blending, I think it's a pretty good practice to put a little bit of like watered down white on the really, really lightest part of the eye white. It just makes the dimension pop. 
For eyelashes, I like to pull up on my phone a super close up image of the eye and with a really little brush, try to get the eyelashes to be in the exact same position. This is a really hard step, but I think that when you get it right, it really makes the person look three dimensional. The same kind of thing goes for eye glint, but I really recommend if you're gonna do the charcoal method to just literally copy down exactly where the eye glint is. For eyebrows, I put a color that serves kind of like the background to the hairs, and then I paint on individual hairs of different shades. I definitely say look into what the darkest shade is and then the lightest and then mix a couple in between. <laughs> So mouth tips, nope, uh-uh, we're not calling it that. Okay, so tips for the mouth. So the first thing is that teeth aren't just white, just like how eye whites aren't just white. There's tons of different shades within them. And almost always, there's a shadow from the lip cast onto the teeth. Another thing to think about is, depending on how far back into the mouth the teeth that you're painting are, the color is going to be darker. This goes for lip highlights and eye glint. Basically, highlight isn't always just stark white. Sometimes it's just a lighter color. Here's where I would give you hair tips if I really had any that would work well. I'm kind of still figuring out how to do hair well, especially with acrylics. So for the finishing touches of this painting, I wanted to add kind of like an orchid purpley pink kind of thing to the background. I thought it would look really cool. So when I'm trying to be really extra with a painting, which let's face it, is almost every single time I paint, I like to use toothpicks to put pores into my paintings and to put tiny, tiny, tiny little details of wrinkles in the eyes. And I don't know, I'm just such a geek for this stuff. I think it's so fun. And one signature later, I'm finally done. <laughs> because why have a platform if I can't help other people? I just think it's kind of silly. So I put a story up, I think a couple of days ago on my art Instagram, asking people to send me their favorite pieces that they've done recently. This video's winner is Jermaine Banner. He sent me in this really cool leaf with water droplets painting, which I think has a lot of the realism kind of stuff we were talking about earlier of paying attention to light and depth. Please go give him a like and follow if you have the time. Follow my art Instagram if you guys want a chance to be featured in my next video. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Making these videos is really fun for me. I have so many more videos planned, but with all that being said, just go make shit. Love you.